Welcome back to the Wanderers Podcast. Episode 16. Yeah, we actually know what episode it is to this this day. Yeah. On yeah. this show. We figured that much out anyways. We figured out the system. I can't believe it's 16 already. I know. Unbelievable. That's like... That's like, like almost 20. Jason. Wow. With all the breaks and stuff, I don't know how many months is that. It's like four months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess. No, that's like five, almost half a year. When the fuck did we start? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? What year is this? I think I we know. started in uh, either February or March. Yeah. So in the same March, April, May, June, July. Yeah, almost six months. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. How do you like me now? Anyways... Yes. Today we had uh, Dart Guy. Dart Guy, Toronto Maple Leafs fan who uh, blew up across the country. All over social media and all the sports networks. They yeah. And the, the like, Leafs nation, like the fan base is really ra- rallied behind him. <laughs> oh yeah, we're going to see more of him in the coming seasons as you'll hear more about. And uh, yeah, we had... We're going to try and help him to... out when we talk to Jay. Yeah. If we talk to Jay, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Yeah, we want to get him on the Jay and Dan podcast, so that'd be awesome. Either that or the TSN show too. They would, they love shit like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, and then we started talking about some TV, which turned into a discussion of economics and politics somehow. And yeah, we 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 tend to wander here on the <laughs> Wander <laughs> podcast. Just a bit. Yeah, and uh, at the end we talked a little bit about. Um, the future of Vigis. 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 Video games. Oh, I gotta get the... Yeah. Hank Hill saying Vigis. <laughs> yeah. Vigis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta find that. Yeah. See, the thing with all the other guys, like uh, like Randy and, and Nicolas Cage, is you can look on YouTube and stuff, and you just, like, search good moments and... It's hard to do that with Hank because he wasn't as big or. It's a lot of like the, the characters around him yeah. and just like the way he yeah, reacts for sure. to yes. all the fucking stuff around. Like, <laughs> God damn it, Bobby! That uh, brings me to another point. I. Bansel. For the next, uh, <laughs> for the next, mascot ballot, we should do like a legacy vote because we have, we've had four now. So oh, yeah. we could do like Randy, Nick, Shia, oh. and Hank. We could. And that would make it easier on me because I have a lot all their cuts set out, anyways. So. Well, we'd have to find different cuts. Well, like uh, yeah, okay. So either way, I do like that idea. We should bring in. Uh, we'll we'll cast this now. You're you're witnessing this live on the Wanderers podcast. This is the new ballot system. We're going to send out a vote halfway through the votes after we reach four to vote somebody back in for the next ballot. I don't like that. I like the idea I of... I like you. Well, fuck I'm you, fuck man. man. <laughs> <laughs> no, like... Um, hey! I think, like, doing four... Like, get four guys, or four No, it's going to be legacy. <laughs> <laughs> you need a new stand, man. I know, it's peace. <laughs> it's peace. Yeah, so that's, I think we'll we'll try it anyways. No. No, looking back at my previous statement, that was pretty gay. We don't need to do that. No, we don't. You're witnessing this live it's on the Wanderers podcast. It's way too hard. Train wrecks. Gotta all sit, day. Gotta every sit. day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never we're never redoing an intro like we're just gonna leave the train wrecks in no that's the whole point yes yes okay so that covers it yeah that, that's basically all we wanted to tell you here anyway so now you can watch the show now without any further adieu we will sh- throw to Hank Hill and the band the garage band see what I think you should do is different segments every time. Dude, it's f- fucking hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, fucking teach me. 
and I help you. I like that though. I like like the, the the routine intros and stuff. It changes every four weeks, so like, or four episodes, anyways. That's true. And I really like the, the hoedown that they have. So it is pretty good. All right. But there's only a couple times where we end up like messing up during a fucking show. Yeah, so I, like, I kind of stopped doing that. Like, I'll do different cuts every time. Like, instead of, like, what we used to do with the buffering and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, Anyways, that's when we... let's throw to the interview with Dark Guy, and uh, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it's hot in this bitch. It is so fucking hot. So I'm gonna take a phone my clothes. No, you're not. No, I'm not. All right. I gotta stop being that. Dark Guy. Dark Guy. Take it away, Hank. You wanna throw down with a hoe down? I'll get my guitar. I'll get my washboard. I'll go get my string bass, which is really a keyboard. Hey, man, I'm gonna go, go get my banjo. Maybe I'm gonna go get a little accordion, man. What do you think? No. No, 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 no banjo, man. Let's go. One, two, three. <laughs> Hey, yo, man, I, I don't know what to go do now. I'm going to take a verse right now. Blue moon up, Kentucky, keep on shining. Well, shine on the one that's going to prove untrue. Blue moon up, Kentucky, keep on shining. Well, shine on the one that's going to let me blue. Bobby, put that down. That's the jug I keep stuff in. I didn't mean to get into it. No, no, it's my fault, Connie. I told you to saw. Okay, ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Got some shackles in the back. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously, I do. There's no back in this place. Hello? Hey, buddy, how's it going? Good, yourself? Not bad. Good, good. How's... Um, how's everything, uh, on your end? Where, where, whereabouts are you located? Uh, well, I'm in Waterloo, but right now I'm, uh, I'm still up in my, uh, up in my camp. Awesome. Oh, yeah, where is your camp? I'm um, about 40 minutes east of Perry Sound, uh, just on Highway 124, a uh, gorgeous little spot up here you got. Are you on a lake? Yeah, we're, uh, it's, the place is called Camp Klahani. We're on, uh, it's called, uh, Amic, uh, Amic uh, Lake, Mayak Lake. Uh, we're right on to the, so there's a pretty big, uh, pretty big water uh, shed here for us. That's pretty nice. nice. Is it like, um, just like a family camp or is it like a cottage or what, what's going on there? Uh, no, it's, it's a trailer park. Um, uh, basically been coming here for 20 years and uh, a few years ago, the, the owner told us, uh, either somebody was buying the park or, or we all had to leave. So a bunch of us got together and, and bought the park. So it's, uh, it's a bunch of different families involved here, and it's a, it's a trailer park. We don't have any cottages or anything like that. Oh, okay. How far away is that from Waterloo? That's about a three and a half hour drive if you're uh, if you're not stopping anywhere and don't hit any traffic. That's actually not too bad. It's no, not, not at all, and it's a, it's such a beautiful area. It's worth the drive. Anyway, oh yeah, up so. that area is. Really is it nice. in the Muskokas or is that? Uh, well, yeah, I guess it, it's part of it's part of cottage country. It's con- pretty much considered the Muskokas, but uh, no, we're 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 a little bit uh, we're about a half hour away from like like Josephine and stuff like that, uh, where where all the rich movie stars are. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Me, uh... do you go party with them? Do you ever uh, take countries <laughs> out there? No, no. But uh, there's a little town called Burke's Falls, uh, uh, not too far from where my park is, and every once in a while you uh, you, you might run into somebody. Uh, over the years, uh, Martin Short's been there uh, across paths with Charlie Sheen. Um, nice. And, well, now and, now and it's you, others, eh? But... And it's you now. <laughs> the dark uh, guy. Well, uh, I was there just the other day uh, uh, grabbing some food from a few local places, and uh, I was getting stopped, yeah. so How That's does awesome. that feel? Uh, you know what? It's uh, I'm still I'm still not quite used to it. It's still a little bit surreal. Um, you know, people stop and they want my picture, and I just I don't know. I just can't help but giggle a little bit because you know I I didn't do anything special other than uh, Yo, lever- be a diehard Beast the fan, right? Shit out of that. That's awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it's a lot like uh, in Vancouver, the guys with like the body suits and stuff. It's gonna be like yeah, a, the, the guys like a in trope green, yeah. now, right? Mm-hmm. 
people are going to expect you to be at every game. <laughs> well, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, uh, coming with Dark Eye, I didn't win the lottery. So uh, if they're going to want me at every game, I think the I think the Maple Leafs might want to have to uh, look at season tickets or something because <laughs> I can't oh, afford yeah. it myself. So now <laughs> you should start like a Patreon and then have yeah, your yeah, fans support sure. you to go to the shows. That'd be amazing. You could totally uh, do what, it too. Yeah, you know what? And uh, it's it's been suggested on a few different occasions uh, that people wanted to start a like GoFundMe page uh, for for different various reasons uh, to get Dark Eyes somewhere. And uh, as humbling and, and as kind as that is, uh, I politely refused every time because, as far as I'm concerned, there's so many other good causes, uh, legitimate charities that yeah. you know could use yes. that money. That uh, I wasn't going to take it to go to a Leafs game type thing. Now. You've gotten a lot of opportunities with being dark guy now, though. So, are you have you been making any money off of uh, any like appearances and stuff like that, or? Uh, I I've definitely uh, put a couple extra bucks in my pocket here and there for a few different things. Yeah. Awesome. And have like any of the Leafs organization reached out to you at all, or? Uh, over the over the time, uh, the, the Maple Leafs themselves. Uh only reached out to me uh, during the playoffs when they had offered me the, the free tickets for the playoffs. Uh, other than that, there hasn't been too much in the Maple Leafs organization themselves. Um, I've had uh, I've been was in constant contact with uh, with Matt Martin though uh, ever since all of this uh, came about. So that was pretty cool. And uh, I had uh, um, uh, Ty Domi reach out to me uh, via Twitter, and, and we've been in in a pretty constant conversation. So. Uh, and that's pretty cool right there because uh, two uh, two salt of the earth guys are uh, you know they fight for their ice time and uh, they take care of the boys so that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're getting you're sounding a little muffled there. Um, yeah, I would, I'm not too sure. I say a lot of people have been saying that to me recently with my my uh, phone. I don't know what's going on with it. Oh, it might be a problem on your phone then. Yeah. Okay. It's all good. Like I can still hear you and understand. Yeah. you. it's just like a tiny bit of muffle. That's all. No big deal. No, it's funny because, like, I've experienced kind of, like, the same thing. A uh, little bit of local fame. Uh, when I was, a couple years ago, I, I was uh, featured on the Conan O'Brien TV show. So, oh, nice. Yeah. And then as soon as that happened, like, everybody stopped me and talked to me. And people were yelling at me out of their cars and stuff like that. And it was just local, but still kind of surreal. I, yeah, it is. It, it, it's pretty. It's it, it's a little bit to deal with, uh, you know, and you know you're not expecting it, and it just kind of happens. But uh, no, I, I was actually even pulled over by uh, by OPP in the Waterloo region because the girl saw me, recognized me, and wanted my picture. Oh no way! That's funny. <laughs> so yeah, I, I the the cruiser came up beside me and uh, they signaled for me to pull over. It's like oh fuck, oh fuck. <laughs> Can I get your oh, picture? Oh, 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 yeah, and that's what it was. Uh, she came up to the window and she said, "You're dark guy." I said, "Yes, officer, I am." She's like, "Get out of your vehicle. I want a picture." Said, All right. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it was pretty pretty funny. How did like? You, is this something that you did a lot? Like when you go to games, is paint your face, or was that the uh, no, first time? You know, or? It, it wasn't the first time. So uh, last summer, when we had uh, when the Maple Leafs drafted Austin Matthews uh, first overall. Uh, a friend of mine and I, we went down to Buffalo, and when I went down to Buffalo, I, I went pretty good for the draft because uh, I, I was so excited. I knew we were taking Matthews, and I knew how good of a talent he was. So I had uh, done my head up pretty good with a uh, blue maple leaf on either side of the head, a blue mohawk, and uh, I had uh, blue handlebars uh, uh, to honor uh, Wendell Clark, our, our last first overall pick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I had done that in Buffalo, and uh, you know there, I got some pretty good attention in Buffalo, and uh, uh, but nothing uh, too crazy. But uh, when I went to that playoff game in in, in Washington, uh, I was not going to miss the opportunity to support my team uh, that was finally back in the playoffs and and finally heading in the right direction after uh, so many years of suffering as a Leaf fan. Yeah. Oh yeah, what they did was incredible. Like, Absolutely, I'm, I'm not. Uh, Leafs fan, but I can respect the turnaround that our organization has done in the last few years. Yeah, it was nice uh, nice to have Brendan Shanahan come in and uh, just have the patience to say, you know, we've got to strip it down and, and start from rock bottom. And, you know, he, he took the, the one season to evaluate uh, what he had within the organization, and he did that from top to bottom. And uh, he ended up cleaning the house, getting rid of all the scouts, 
uh, getting rid of uh, a whole bunch of uh, development coaches and stuff like that, and he just brought in his own guys, and uh, he, he really he really did it the right way. Yeah. Or did the team just do a lot better because Dark Guy well, he, yeah. just made the fans <laughs> roar, <laughs> yeah. and you are like now a national – an inspiration. Inspiration, yes. Well, you know what? I, I, I definitely appreciate that sentiment. And as much as I'd like to take credit for it, uh, no, uh, it, it was the boys working their, their butts off on the ice and uh, coming together as a team that, that you know, made it happen for them. It was just a very happy coincidence uh, that whenever they seemed to show me on the big screen, they never lost. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that all comes with, like, the success like everyone's happy to see that the Leafs were doing well and then all of a sudden this kind of representation comes up of of hardcore Leaf fans and the whole country got behind you man it's crazy yeah it, it's uh, still still when I look back on it a little bit to, I'm trying to figure out you know you know how it all happened and, and everything it is it is kind of mind-blowing to think uh, how much uh, Leaf Nation got behind it and even to a certain extent, other fan bases that could just relate to you know, their passion for their own team, uh, they could find a, a correlation with me. So it's like it, it wasn't even just Leafs Nation that uh, really embraced it. It was, it was teams from other organizations, uh, fans from other organizations as well. Well, I'm an example of that because I'm a, I'm a Sens fan. <laughs> so, <laughs> But I loved everything that was happening with the Leafs. Like I've, My whole life, I've just kind of been against them and... I don't know. This year, I didn't hate them as much as I usually do. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fair. Hey, it's something, right? I was I, I, I was yeah. cheering for them for sure. Just the, up until if they played Ottawa, then they were going down. But <laughs> yeah, for, for one time there, it's kind of seemed like Toronto uh, was one of the you know the most hated teams uh, among opposing fan bases and. Uh, you know, I, I guess it's the, the enthusiasm of, of Matthews and, and, and Marner and Nylander that kind of maybe changed some people's uh, uh, opinion of the Leafs. So it's kind of nice to see, but unfortunately I'm always going to hate the Sens. So. Yeah, I know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the Leafs got a whole new face. It was a facelift. Like they're, they're a completely different organization now. And I think yeah, for sure. they're young for sure. and, and I mean, talented. That, that's and... When, you, when you can get a generational talent like, like Matthews in there, who's years, years beyond uh, his age and his maturity. You know, he just he changes the whole face of the franchise just uh, kind of overnight, right? So, Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I noticed you, you said you're from Waterloo. We're actually from Elmira. Okay. Do you, you, yeah, I, you'd have to, Elmira yeah, you'd have to know. The what? The Elmira Wheat Kings. The Sugar Kings. Oh, the Sugar Kings. The, sugar, that's the Wheat Kings. Kings. Yeah. Wheat Kings. That's a yeah. tragic hip song, isn't it? Yeah, that absolutely is. Yeah. So, did you ever? Do you ever get down to the Maple Syrup Festival? No, I actually haven't. Oh no! How long have you lived in Waterloo? Uh, I've I've been in Waterloo for uh, about eight years now. Okay, eight years. Yeah. And never been to the Sap Fest. No, but uh, uh, I'm I'm assuming. By the way, uh, you're talking about. I'm gonna need to get out there and check it out. Oh yeah, every, definitely. Every, uh, here. every April We're we definitely have. gonna need to get together. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> We've been. We tell like all of our guests, <laughs> you gotta come, come for the <laughs> sap fest. Well, it's like the only thing we have. It's like, please, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> please come to us. It's the only allure that Elmira has. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the Mennonites or the old CTs. You know? Yeah. That's like. <laughs> but yeah. No, it's actually a fun time. Like, if you enjoy watching people eat, you know, uh, especially a lot of oh, oh, food festivals are amazing. Oh, yeah. Like, it's it's yeah. I was no, gonna say I've never been to a, a food fest or, or or a beer festival that I didn't like. So yeah, <laughs> I thought you were just gonna say in general, like you haven't been, but you, you yeah get that on yeah. Good note. You got you, <laughs> you have to. I love food fests. Like it's rib fest, rib fest. Oh yeah. The, oh, all the yeah, craft beer fast, and uh, October. Uh, obviously, living in the KW area, there, uh, October Fest is a good one. So, oh, yeah. there's one, lots of stuff that goes on. There's the the food truck festival and uh, the Greek food festival, and mm-hmm. it's all good. Yeah. So you're up there on the on the lake. Are you getting out fishing much? Or no, no, I'm actually not uh, not a huge fisherman. I used to 
maybe uh, when I was a little bit younger, but uh, kind of got away from it as the uh, as the years went by. So uh, I more enjoy uh, you know, sitting around uh, sitting around a fire with my buddies and just having some laughs and stuff. Right on. Right on. Right on, bud. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So is, when next year rolls around, are we going to see uh, see more of the dark guy or just well, I, I as much as he can? I'll most certainly be at a few Leaf games next year, and uh, hopefully, hopefully something happens in the near future where I could almost guarantee being at, at all the home games. So that would be uh, – that, that would be uh, pretty special if I could uh, somehow swing that. So, but yeah, you'll you guys will uh, definitely see Dark Eye in, in the future. Awesome. It's a shame that uh, that Jay and Dan weren't weren't on TSN while you were doing all this because that would have been <laughs> glorious. I mean, Tim and Sid are kind of good stand-ins for Jay and Dan, mm-hmm. but as soon as Jay and Dan are back, it's this. Oh yeah, when Jay and Dan are back, and you just get on their show too, yeah, it's just yeah. blow up from there. Yeah, well, I, I had that quick segment with the boys, uh, with Tim and Sid there. Uh, we we did before game, I believe it was before game three, uh, back in Toronto. Yeah, uh, I saw but that. I, I didn't really get to talk to them too much. Uh, I had spoken a little more with uh, James Duffy and the guys over at TSN, and uh, those guys were fantastic. So uh, de- definitely enjoyed ha- having a chance to meet, like, O-Dog and Noodles and uh, – and uh, Hayes and, and James Duffy, those guys were uh, were class acts and, and treated me well. So oh yeah, it just would have been great because Jay and Dan get get behind all sorts of that the kooky yeah. stuff. So oh yeah, yeah yeah. yeah. I've had that conversation before that it was kind of a little bit of a shame that uh, uh, they they weren't they weren't back in full swing uh, when all this happened. But oh well, maybe next year. Oh for sure next year. You know what's gonna happen. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're it's actually coming. Winter's coming. We're actually going to have uh, Jay on the podcast as soon as they, they roll out the new show, so I'll, oh, bring, awesome. I'll bring it up to him. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> well, well, hey, I appreciate any continued promotion. So. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we got all the ins. We got no. <laughs> well, we've latched on to pretty much, I don't know if you're familiar with the Jay and Dan podcast, but... Uh, yeah, no, I hadn't, I hadn't actually heard of it yet. Yeah, so it's a great, it's a great podcast. You got to check it out. Um, sure. so we've sort of kind of like latched on to, to them. So we get a lot of their, most of our guests have be, came from them. So yeah, it's just that Jay and Dan themselves can't come on our show yet. Cause they're on a media freeze until, until September, I'm assuming they just don't want to do it until the show launches. So yeah. When they relaunch the, the show there on TSN. Well, that's awesome. That's a great, uh, a great content to have, uh, if if they're sending some some guests your way for your for your show as well, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's been great. It's been a real treat. Yeah, honestly, we just, like we've been, met some really nice like gen, like genuine people, you know. Like, yeah, it's well, we've had really good conversations. That's what it's all about, right? Just uh, some good old Canadian boys and girls trying to have a good time and and enjoy uh, enjoy some some hockey and stuff. So, mm-hmm. oh yeah. What do you think of the pen pens winning winning the cup again? Ah well, you know what? I, I, I they, to me, to me, I thought it was inevitable all year. They just, uh, even when they had uh, some struggles and whatnot, I just the team was too good, and they were too much playoff experience. Um, I, w- I was hoping they weren't going to, but uh, uh, I was pretty sure that's the way it was going to end. So I, I wasn't overly too surprised to to see them go back to back. So would you have cheered for the Senators if they made it through? Absolutely not. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Why not? not at all. I don't. I don't buy into the. I don't buy into the theory that you have to cheer for a Canadian team. Uh, you know, once your team gets eliminated, because as far as I'm concerned, most of the teams in the states they're they're you know they're 75, 80 percent Canadians on the <laughs> yeah. team anyway. So I know it's insane. Uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm unfo- I, I respect the fact that uh, you know you said earlier in the show you, you you've changed your opinion on the Leafs a little bit. You don't hate them quite as much. Unfortunately. I'll never be a guy that cheers for the Montreal Canadiens or the Ottawa Senators. Hey, never yeah, say yeah, never. I, yeah, <laughs> never. I can guarantee <laughs> you that right now. Never. Uh, the closest I would get is may- maybe, maybe if the Edmonton Oilers or Calgary Flames were doing okay, I could maybe cheer for them if the Leafs were out. Yeah. But well, uh, no, you'll you'll never see me get behind the Senators or the Habs. And uh, I, I apologize for that in advance. Hey, I'm used to it. It was me for the last. 25 years of my life yeah yeah uh, i'll tell you right now honestly like 
the Montreal Canadiens could draft my firstborn child, and I still wouldn't cheer for them. <laughs> oh man, that's brutal. <laughs> that, that's Good that, for you, that's I guess, how son. Deep my but loyalty goes. Fuck your team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's the that's what being a Leafs fan is, right? Yeah, you bleed blue. You know, that's you stick with them through the thick and thin, and uh, uh, I I think that's you know part of the reason why uh, th- this kind of blew up a little bit for me. So yeah. For sure, they they've needed something to rally behind, and you were there to to pick them up. Well, I I, I think I think Matthews, Martin, and Nealander were pretty good. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the guys scoring the goals, but glad I could latch onto their coattails and go for the ride for sure. Hey, you were part of it. It was it was incredible. I'm sure it was an incredible ride. So. Uh, you know what, and that it, it has been, and uh, to my surprise, you know, it, it's not slowing down yet. So this could just be uh, the beginning, you know. Like, uh, you know what, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know what the future holds, but uh, I'm, I think I'm more shocked than anybody that uh, <laughs> this didn't die when the Leafs got eliminated. Uh, you know, I figured when the Leafs were going to get got eliminated, it was going to be all over, uh, <laughs> and and I was happy and fine with that. Uh, but for whatever reason, it, 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 it's still going and uh, people still curious to know, you know, what's going on in their guy's life and stuff like that. So uh, I'm happy to share it with them. Yeah. It's uh, it was definitely interesting. <laughs> yeah. I wish Ottawa had something like that, but uh, unfortunately, well, we we rallied pretty well, I guess. It was a bit of a storybook season for us, too. Yeah. But uh, I won't go into the Senators when I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. Just how polite. Be, be <laughs> Not the pleasant, the pleasant conversation. <laughs> no. Anyways, I'm sure you got lots of stuff to do. Are you heading back to Waterloo tonight, or? Yeah, actually, I'm. I'll be heading back tonight. I'm uh, going out to uh, Jim Thompson's uh, player development camp tomorrow to. Uh, uh, to help some of the guys out and help Jim out with his uh, his camp there, so that's going to be uh, quite the experience. Uh, Jim played for uh, ten years in the NHL, and the uh, highlight of his career was two years with Gretzky in LA. Uh, so I'm really kind of looking forward to this. Yeah. So you, you like are you? Is this interfering with like your personal life or your job or anything? Like uh, at this point in time, no, it's not. Uh, I've been very fortunate with the time and everything. And everything so. Uh, it, it, it's uh, been been okay that way. That's good. Well, it was great having you on, man. Yeah, it's a great conversation. Okay. You know what, guys? <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, and uh, my apologies that it, it took so long to happen. I know we were uh, going back and forth there for a little while, but hey, it's, uh, thank it's you so fine. much for having me. It really worked hey, out. We, life, had, uh, you know? we had lots of guests lined up. so Perfect. All right, man. Alrighty, guys. Well, thank you so much, and uh, uh, I'd be happy to be on again anytime. So feel free to uh, hit me up again on Twitter or whatever the case may be. Yeah, All right, absolutely. for sure, man. We will. Right, thanks, guys. All right. Later. Yeah. See ya. Dark guy. Dark guy. That's cool. Yeah, he's, he's a fucking stand-up dude. Yeah. I mean, most people that we haven't really ever had a bad guest, yeah. so it keeps rolling like that. It's good. I don't think somebody would want to come onto the show and just be like, "Yeah, what the fuck? It's all about, man. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? What do you think you're doing?" <laughs> no, I like, know. Nobody wants to be seen like that. We're asshole. just sitting here, just like, "We're sorry." The yeah, we're sorry. No, I know. I hope that doesn't happen. It might, but it, we could turn. I'd be it. like, "Fuck you! <laughs> yeah. We're gonna do whatever the fuck we want." Yeah, we could totally. We're the wanderers. Turn it. Yep. Wander our way around that situation. Yeah, we're, we're, what do you, we just, no, we're just going to walk right around that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. so we should break? Yeah, take All it right. away, Hank. Hank Hill, everybody. <sighs> Why would anyone do drugs when they could just mow a lawn? Literally didn't move. We literally <laughs> decided happened. not to have a break after all, but whatever. That's the way we do it. We just we do whatever we want here on the Wanderers podcast. Yes, we do. All right, so Jason, anything interesting going on with your week? Uh, I don't know. Watch 
some good TV and watched, uh, played some good vids. Yeah, you said you binge watched, which show was that? Ozark. The Ozark. What's yeah. that about? So it's a white guy who launders money for a Mexican cartel, and he has a family. Yeah. And I can't say anything more because... Mm, give it away. Well, that's it. That, that's the premise of the show. A whole bunch of shit happens, or else it wouldn't so be a it's TV almost show. Like, is it almost like a style of how Breaking Bad was kind of like... Kind of. ...filmed and everything like this? It's mm-hmm. kind of... The, like, Breaking Bad, Walt was like a reluctant criminal... This guy is just kind of like straight up does it like the Ozark, just Ozark. Oh, just Ozark. Yeah, I fucked up. Cause o- Ozark is like a place in America. I th- uh, I want to say Wisconsin. I couldn't tell you. Oh, anyways, it's like the Adirondacks where it's the Muskokas and just a nice forested, campy tourist area. Mm-hmm. In America. He just sells a bunch of drugs. Well, there's... No. Draft, you say, I don't know. There's... I don't want to get in... Like, I don't want to spoil anything. Like, he gets into a new area where he's got new competitors and stuff like that, so... Oh, yeah. Gotcha. And there's, like, pressing issues at hand. It's really good. Like, I, I turned it on. Expecting... Uh, I'll just watch the first episode. I ended up watching, like, half the season... And I literally went to sleep, woke up the next day, and watched the rest of it. <laughs> so, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the best Netflix series, like, anyways. What is going on with TV where it's just like, it sucks you the fuck in. And it's just like, you just can't it's, not watch the rest of it. Cause it's just because like, it, have people have gotten know. so good at their jobs. Well, it's, and it's, it's just, there's like the perfect formula, like... Every single show now ends on a cliffhanger. Like if it no. didn't, if it didn't, like it's. Just, I know I hate that, but uh, people wouldn't want to like come back because there's so yeah, many things would. taking your would. attention, right? Like, I, that cliffhangers piss me off, especially season-ending cliffhangers, because well, then you got to wait like six or seven months for the next one. I'm not saying every single episode of every show. I don't mind episodes ending in cliffhangers, but when you end like seasons, a lot of shows like. I think Lost was like one of the ones that like pioneered that shit. Cause they took they did six seasons of just every fucking episode was just a massive cliffhanger. And they had like, commercials too, so <sighs> they they had right. cliffhangers in the middle of the episode. Oh like, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. What, what is watched, that though? Like we're watched, so yeah. like we have to know the answers. It's like we gotta know what happened. You know what I mean? Because like, you're invested. Like you, you oh, get yeah. into a show. <laughs> You want a, you want resolution. That's that's the way our I mind works. I watched this show for five hours. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing too. Like, now we're at a point where we can we can binge, and it's. It used to be back in the '90s, like TV shows. Each episode was its own entity, right? Mm-hmm. So, like every episode would be its own story. Now, that's not the case because you know. Like, producers know that people are going to come back every week or they're going to watch every episode on Netflix. So they don't have to do that single episode story. They can do huge arcs, 10, 20 episode long stories, and people are going to watch it. The first show that I can think of that did that was The X-Files. And they kind of did both, right? They had each episode, like, the... They had, like, the... X-File that he was... That Duchovny was working on, or, or Fox Mulder, and... He would do that, but there was also this secondary arc kind of behind it, like the episodes where Scully gets abducted or you're t- looking at, or Mulder's looking for his sister and stuff like that. Those That was like really groundbreaking back in the day mm-hmm. because he didn't have Netflix and he didn't have the internet and people literally had to schedule Wait, their shit. time yeah. and yeah. make sure they're watching or else they missed it. And like you didn't even, back then you didn't even have TV shows coming out on DVD. So, like, if you missed it, you had to wait for, like, a rerun or something. Or, like, hear what, like, all your friends are like, Oh, I can't believe you fucking missed it. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah, and we're really the first generation that doesn't have to deal with that. And, and then that's really influencing TV now, big time, because you got these huge productions. Well, and it's really allowed TV to step it up. Oh, yeah. 
I think that's a big reason why TV's in, in the its golden age. Well, it's like storytellers know the formulas now and the technology with even lower budget shows that like well, think, cinema back in the day, like yeah. with high quality movies and stuff, and you look back at it now, like you just you shake your head, you're like, How the fuck did we even watch that? But now the technology is amazing. Like the old Mortal Kombat movies? Yeah. <laughs> that shit blew my mind when I was a kid. Now it's like I know. What the hell was that? It's fucking bicycle kick scene. Where it's <laughs> yeah. just like when I was a kid I'm like hit the rewind on the VCR. <laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it would eat your taste. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking. It shit has changed so quick when you think about it's it. It's awesome. It's awesome, but like, ah, uh, like ten years ago. That's what things do. They change. They. I'm not saying. <laughs> like, but it's, no, it's the, amazing. It's right? like time is speeding up because of technology. Well, that's like, what all this that's, stuff's being revealed. Like, that's, that's what, what technology, technology does. Is. It it's grows exponentially. Of, or it's like the. I was listening to some philosophy thing today where it was just, like, kind of talking about... It's not necessarily that technology's bad or whatever. It has good and bad. Well, think of it like this. The first 10,000 years of human history, humans never flew. As soon as one Mm -hmm. person designed an airplane, you have millions of different designs of airplanes and and different ways of flying. Mm -hmm. And you can... We've... It, that's all it took. Well, even well, is one huge breakthrough, and then it just explodes. It's, it's those breakthroughs, and then it's it's those innovators that are like, all right, we're fucking doing this. And then there's the me too's that come after that, make and tweak but the it's designs not, and stuff. And like the that. thing and is, it, is it, it works ends up together. becoming so commoditized. There's so many different airliners and stuff. It's hard to compete. So then it brings the cost down. I'm talking like, specifically con- just technology, not no, yeah, any yeah, yeah. like commercialism or anything like that. I'm talking purely on a technological level. Mm-hmm. It it exploded. I don't care about all the like how they sold it or all the companies and all that, but like it it took a culmination of technologies to come together. Cuz oh, yeah. you there were ideas like Leonardo da Vinci had it, the idea of a flying machine and like you 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 go back, they had the ideas. Mm-hmm. Like, people were trying to do it, but they, it just didn't have that support, right? So the Wright brothers, they, they had an engine on their plane. Mm-hmm. So first you had to build the engine, right? You couldn't build the engine without uh, parts that are forged or, or cast, right? So you first have to build the forge or casting, and, and that's how it works, right? Everything plays on each other. Mm-hmm. And there's another new thing that just came out, totally unrelated, but it's called, it's a, it's a biological, it's something biological that happens in every person and every uh, living bacteria and stuff. It's called CRISPR. It's the thing that runs along the DNA strands and picks out the bad DNA. We've recently just figured out how to control it. And since we've learned how to control it we've learned how to play movies with dna so and now we're getting to the point where we're now going to be able to write shit on water too like the water water molecule like not molecules dna water doesn't have dna no like the there's something else they're doing with water that they can like program it it's yeah that too like there's a whole bunch of cool shit out there (laughs) but this CRISPR thing is going to be revolutionary it's going to it can potentially cure diseases. Could we could potentially have no longer have birth defects? See, this is it's part, not like when perfect, it comes to, but it's it's gonna be like an incredible tool. There's so much optimism to look at. Like when you look at technology, like there's like this grand picture that everybody's being painted upon. Like we look around and look at all the turmoils of the earth that's happening right now, climate change, all the wars that are happening, all this fucking s- stuff that's coming and they're telling you that's happening, but when you look, step back and look at human progression in general and how much crime is coming down, at, like, globally, like, there is awful shit happening. But right all now. those problems, too, they are also caused by technology. A lot of it is, but... Like the... Uh, 
the Indo-Europeans killing the Minoans. They did it because the Indo-Europeans invented the chariot, and Minoan didn't know what the fuck a chariot was, so a guy rolls up with a chariot, fires an arrow, and kills the guy, and everyone's like, what the fuck was that thing? Yeah. Like, And then it just speeds off. So they don't know. It's it's technology's impartial, right? It's amazing. Like you can take thermo, you can take uh, nuclear energy, and you can power an entire country, or you can blow up an entire city. Mm-hmm. So it's really impartial itself. It's it's us, really. It all boils well, down to that's our why I get choices. so mad when everybody's like, "Oh, we we need to save the earth." It's like, no, we need to fucking save ourselves because we're the ones causing all this stuff, and we're well. There is that, and then there's ways instead of like everyone's looking back, looking at it like we have to correct our own behavior. Why don't we instead of looking like that? Why don't we try to supplement our behavior? Put in infrastructure that counteracts what we do because we're not going to stop. I think like we're not going to stop idea, until an easier method is going to be put in. Like we until, always want the easiest thing. Yeah. So we're not going to stop until something easier comes along. And if that option that is easier is more friendly or eco-friendly, then great. But well, well, until we get to that point, we need to like supplement what we do now. Like we need mm-hmm. to put scrubbers in the air. We need to do stuff. We need to do something. No, that's that's what I mean. Like we have you know, we have social media and stuff. We can tell these stories and market these ideas. And when you look at things like Kickstarter and Patreon and GoFundMe and all this stuff, like when you look at the technology we actually have, it's, it becomes a mindset and we need to start creating content and stuff because everybody is like watching content, whether it's you're watching awesome shows, but it's just, hold on. It's, it's the fact that you can literally fund things at the click of a button on your phone. Like there could be a solar company that comes up. They're like, we have the technology that's going to save it and you can fund it. And if you pay this much into it, you can have one of your own and it'll yeah. make the company run. Like it's capitalism, See, that, that, but it's conscious exactly, capitalism. It's like that. That's exactly what I was going to say is yeah. capitalism in and of itself is kind of holding it back. It's it's the fact that way. our it's, mindset it's right not now capitalism itself. It's, well, it's the way that we're using it. In it's it. the market. The market is well, the market, and you know what? Well, I'm just we saying. are the market. You know the stuff we buy, the stuff we consume, the things that we're watching. That is what creates the market. Right. You so I mean? it, this whole idea of like monetization and and capitalism is, we need, is a hindrance on moving towards eco friendly. Op- options because, because there is of no interest, special interests. Well, th- of because these corporations, these big companies that have the ability to do it, won't do it because it's not in the best interest of growing uh, economically. Right. It's it's gonna grow the earth into a more eco friendly area, but it's gonna take expenditure. It's not gonna take. It's not gonna give immediate growth. Like it's not gonna mm-hmm. give immediate. Um, like you're not gonna get any capital from it anytime soon. You're gonna. Right. It's gonna be all expenditure for at least well, the whole monetary a decade system or two that decades. We live on is solely predicated that you have capital because capital is oxygen for anything to survive. You know, like your company won't survive off capital. You won't survive off capital. Like we need a currency to, you know, transmit our energy to right, the things that we want to see. You, the, <laughs> like, what I, the what I'm saying, create, the industries that need to come. Like there are there are different political systems that are more that are built more for growing eco-friendly um like initiatives capitalism is not capitalism is is focused more on personal wealth and and the wealth like a growing economy rather than a growing or rather than sustaining uh an ecosystem Mm -hmm. but the whole thing is is not it's not even in the picture in capitalism well there's such there are other companies that come in that uh, that do do well like the 10 tree or whatever that company that makes shirts everything that's happening with 10 trees planted but uber 
Airbnb, all this stuff. This is a preview, and this is solely brought on by capitalism. I know that. You know, I'm not stuff's I, gonna get torn I love, down. I love capitalism. It's you know, but it's, like it's like I understand what you're saying. Where you know, the sole the the main goal of a company is to grow and yeah. to have profit, and you know, like you said, like a lot of the times that interferes with. You know, I love if, what capitalism did, but I b- firmly believe that capitalism is in place only to grow an economy. It's not there to sustain it. You, at some point, you 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 grow past your. your well, what we're you can growing sustain. to the past, exactly, and like, that's where we are. And well, what's going to happen when ninety five percent of the jobs are taken up by robots and artificial intelligence, and, and that there's no more trucks? But there's people on the who road. need to build those robots. There's exactly. people who need to. That's what I mean. There's like this huge shift that's about to happen, and people either need to wake up and start learning about what's actually happening and getting into those fields. And the problem is, right now we're not at a at a point where we're not evolved fast enough with the technology. Well, let me finish. We're not at a point where we like you're saying all these robots are going to come in. It's going to take a higher educated person to work with them. But we're not at a point where we can supply those higher educated people because we make people independently pay for college and their own ed- education. Yeah. Whereas if and that's largely a capitalist idea. Oh no, I so you pay your yeah. own way. I don't and think schools should run off of a capitalistic like it school shouldn't be a business. School should be a thing right. that's you know, whether it's government sanctioned or like like the fucking church, you know? Like why why do yeah, like, why do we yeah. pay the church? <laughs> like what fucking I was listening to that George Carlin thing where he's like you know, God, you know, he's the fucking creator of this whole universe, but he always needs money. <laughs> yeah. Like, and he doesn't pay taxes, yeah. which is fucked. Yeah. You're a part of society. Pay. Pay your way. You're not exempt. No one should be exempt. Mm-hmm. If you benefit from society, you need to contribute. Well, see, that's the thing, too. Like, we want to rob the rich to pay the poor but when you rob the rich to pay the poor the rich can't fucking build these industries that are going to give jobs to the poor people in the first place and then there's no growth that's not uh, but at the entirely same, true like the the thing degree, with socialism is. is instead of letting in capitalism not socialism well i'm no but i'm i'm pivoting here i'm saying the thing with socialism is you have the those systems in place but they're controlled they're not, it's not a rich guy, it's it's a governing body that does it. Well, no, that's my point. Like, there's this governing force that's, you know, it's going off of what we're saying, and we're being told It's going to be a hell of a lot more tax objective the hell than out one of the rich guy. So that they pay for the things that we think they need to pay for. But when you lower the taxes on corporations, and they can, you know, sustain paying everybody for the fu- like they can but they don't they take advantage yeah that's they always take advantage always yeah that's Un- just until fucking that's the problem like the thing like is with when these systems with our like- stock market is built so that if a company isn't making money and they lay people off their stock price goes up how the fuck does that make sense? Because they're not spending as much money. More of your money is going into uh, their product. But 40,000 fucking people just went, went out on the street. How does that push a stock price up? Why? And it, they're only going to fucking survive long enough to do it again. And that's what happened. You have AIG who fucking fell apart and they had to be bailed out by the government. You had Enron. Mm-hmm. Did the same thing. Started dumping stock. Dumping employees. Bring the price up. Sell the stock. That part's fucked. Yeah. Like, it's it's one of those things where unless, like, it is what it is, and then it becomes that balance of good and evil almost. You know what I mean? Like, either... Thank you. Firm, but with little give. Yep, these are medium rare.
What if somebody wants theirs well done? We ask them politely yet firmly to leave. With great meat, son, comes great responsibility. So the light has gotten brighter. Yeah, I could turn that down a little bit, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. That's excessive. Yeah, drain that shitty battery. No, a little more. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. That's about right. what Whatevs. That'll do it. All right, we're coming back now from... I don't know. Yeah, we had a little hiccup. I a little had, hiccup, uh, yeah. My mom came over. Mammy. With my daggy. So we were talking about capitalism and socialism and stuff. Somehow we got from TV to that, so I don't know. Yeah. We we're, can just end, end We were pretty much wrapped up on it yeah. almost anyway. I don't really have I did want to talk a lot more about TV, but I think I'm satisfied with that conversation. We can move on. Mm-hmm. It was very enlightening. Yes, I'm. I'm that much closer to enlightenment. <laughs> Thanks, science. Yep. Yeah. So, what do you want to talk about now? Well, um, I finally sent those fucking books. Nice. Yeah. And then I was like, "Wow, I I got to do that again." So I bought. Like fifty more books and sent another box or two in, so so that they just hold them and then when they're sold they send them. Yeah. So FBA. Long story short, you're an Amazon seller, and they ship and distribute and do customer service for you. Yeah. For fees and the whole. Is it based on sales fees or is it a flat rate that you? Pay? There's commissions and then there's like the handling fees. But then so you're paying a month. FBA fee. is like through their Prime, so it's free shipping on their end. Okay. Like they deal with shipping. So you're paying a Prime account though. Right. I paid twenty nine. Like it, this is the weird thing. You, I can post on Amazon.com, so I can sell in the U.S. market. Yeah. But when you sign up with Canadian, you pay twenty nine ninety nine Canadian. And then when you sign up with Amazon.com to be a pro seller, you pay thirty nine ninety nine American. It's weird. It is. I tried to ask them on the phone. I was like, "How? So how does this work?" They're like, "Oh well, the U.S. dollar is more or something." I'm like, "Well, you pay." That doesn't make sense. Well, though. they might have. I it, think it's because it's a more flooded market. Amazon, but America the, and Amazon Canada are two separate entities, right? It is, but when you're a professional seller, you can sell on... Both. There's three markets, actually. There's, like, the... World. I think Australian, and then I think the Australian-UK one is, like, one. But basically, yeah, when you do what I'm doing, I sell books on Amazon, and I'll get... The ROI on the books that I'm getting is stupid. Like, when they sell... Like, after it snowballs, like, the whole point of it is you keep pl- replenishing your inventory and keep right. snowballing it, right? So that eventually, by the time the book that the statistics, like, it shows you on average, like, you go by sales rank, right? So it'll tell you, like, typically by looking at, like, 100,000 sales rank, it'll be from, like, a week to a month before it sells. Like, that's generally, because, like, the lower the sales rank, the m- the more frequent it goes through. Mm-hmm. So something with like 3 million rank, you wouldn't want. And something right. with like... So you know that when you're buying them? Yeah, because... You just have a vague have, idea? Or you bring your phone with you? Yeah, so you... Um, there's, so there's you're a, cheating? It's not cheating. It's cheat code. It Well, basically. <laughs> it's called life hacks, <laughs> yeah. Jason. No, no, I get it. You, you bring the phone, you scan the book, and it tells you how well it sells. Yeah, it's live searches directly in Amazon's. Okay. Um, so when you're buying textbooks and stuff, you want to you want to get textbooks. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. No, that's like the this is textbook season. Like the next paycheck yeah. I have, I'm going out. Like I'm just buying like all I have the some textbooks. Man, I'm telling you. Um, I have one. Just give me a picture of. The code? Yeah, okay. And I'll look it up, and I'll tell you if it's... I have good. one that will sell. It's a psychology... Give you, like, it's a survey psychology book. Like, survey I will course. give you commission on it, like, if you want... Or if well, you can you buy just, it off me. Whatever. Either way. Yeah. You can buy it off me. 
I've read it. Five bucks. Fuck that. That's like what I'm buying textbooks for. Like that's that's not worth it for I'm me. I'm not gonna. Okay, to the s- one that I have, I paid 150 dollars for. Right. I'll give you a deal. I'm not giving it to you for five bucks. No, I understand that. It would be better if we just fucking. If I got a commission off. Did like a 60-40 or something. Well then, I want 100. <laughs> percent No. Okay. Get your own account. <laughs> no. Yeah. Whatever. We'll work no. it out. I have Honestly, a bunch. like. I know, like... I have an old... Uh, we'll work it out. We don't have... We'll work something out. I know something that I'll sell. I got Beowulf in See, Old English. This is... <laughs> that would be um, something for, like, eBay. Like, stuff that isn't in print, you you wouldn't... <laughs> you'd be surprised. Like, some of the stuff, it shoots the fuck up. Like, there's some books that are listed new from Amazon. Like, there's this... Could you sell, Princess like, Diana collections book? of manuscripts? Like, it's not an official book or anything. Um, like, it was just a collection of readings that if, I had. If there's listings for it. There's no listings. It was made from the school. So, probably not then. Like, but if any, if you're going to do stuff like that, you want to do eBay. eBay. Yeah. All right. But, no, reselling arbitrage. Like, the only reason I'm starting with books is because I want to build my capital. And what I'm starting to learn, too, is a lot of people are doing, like, wholesale shit. They'll fucking... Ship stuff directly from China to their FBA and then mark up the price. I'm selling comic books. That's awesome. That's that's another thing too. Like if you could, that if if you were to niche down and find like a community to like learn about that, like where to like you probably know like where to find good comic books and stuff like that and like. Oh yeah, you can find. And the value people who don't know what they like, have exactly. I mean, it's a shady thing, but every comic book collector does it. Yeah. But Some at the old same lady. time, like, you could make a living doing that. You know, like, you could go to conventions. You could fucking have a table. Dude, I went I went on Kijiji once, and there was a guy who, he had so many goddamn long boxes in his house. Like, he was a crazy collector. Mm-hmm. And I ended up buying, I, I went there because I wanted a certain run. But I, end, I ended up going and seeing how many long boxes he had, and he had just these ones set off to the side. And I was, like, rifling through them, and I found a bunch of really good early Flash comics, and I was just like, what's the deal with these over here? And he's like, oh, I think I'm pricing those to sell. Like, selling them individually? Like, he hadn't gone through them, or maybe he had, or whatever. I was like, well, I'll buy buy these entire boxes Mm -hmm. right now, cash money. And I ended up paying a hundred dollars, and I got what I came for, and plus two long boxes, mm-hmm. and ended up pulling out like <clears throat> I can't remember the exact issue, but it was it was like ten or twelve issues after the Golden Age Flash had switched to the Silver Age Flash, and it's worth like hundreds of dollars. Mm-hmm. It wasn't in great condition, so maybe that's why it was in there. But I don't know. Maybe he had, he had doubles or something. I don't know. But anyways, that's how you do it. Well, it's just like people who fucking sell their old Nintendos and stuff for like a buck at a garage sale. And it's like you get fucking, depending on the the quality, the shape of the games or whatever. Like you, if you can niche down and you can look in and you know something like um, <clears throat> the thing with Amazon, like you can sell anything. Anything with a barcode, you can scan it. Like I could literally go th- through the dollar store and fucking find something that Amazon's selling for five bucks more, and yeah. then s- buy all the fucking boxes, put them in another box, ship them to my fucking warehouse, and then people will buy it. Yeah, like it's insane. No, Amazon is a game changer. That's for sure. Well, that's what that's. I think that's why the whole fucking capitalism conversation came up in the first place because of people waking up and like the technologies we have and the information that's coming at us like it's yeah it, you know exponential pe- growth mm-hmm. it's just gonna happen but like the the switch is flipping like we have have as the people have the power you know what i mean like, i know what you're saying but i don't think it's as black and white as that i think it's the it flip takes, is this you know, or the switch is flipping continuously yeah it'll always be like that like there's always going to be that duality like you're um, you're saying, oh, all this stuff is revolutionary until something else revolutionary comes in and changes the game. 
Oh, that's already happens happening. All the time. Like, yeah, I know, but you can't predict stuff like that. Like, you can, you can look at trends and stuff. It's like you, not predicting; it's acting fast on yeah, stuff that's already here. No, I know. You know what I mean? Like, like the whole social media thing. Like, you had there's thousands, like millions, if not hundreds of thousands, of people doing podcasts. In general, they've been around for ten years, but now the technology is making more readily easier, available yeah. and easier for people to. But that's consume. again, yeah, it's just exponential growth. Like once you like make the switch, you're like, holy fuck! Instead of like listening to all the shitty traffic and stuff, like I can listen to podcasts of stuff that I care about, like stuff that's gonna benefit my life, mm-hmm. stuff that's gonna like, you know, we're compounding our time and we're quantifying ourselves into this digital medium. Like we all have. I get even it. If, even if you have one fucking picture on Facebook, you're a media company. I get it. I know. We, you touch, you say it every time. I know. But like, we're we're just in such a fucking weird spot in human history. All right. It's amazing though, if you if you want to hop on. No, I get it. We gotta move on though. Yes, we. We do. gotta move on, not hop on. Move on. Oh, I'm hopped on. Hopped on. And that's going to move me on. Yeah. I can't tell exactly how long we've been running, but because we had a huge break. Well, it wasn't that huge. It was like 10 minutes at the most. No, it was like... It was like 10 minutes. 10, 12 minutes. Yeah. All right. One last thing. I think... Or no, let's just wrap it up. Oh, you want to talk about something, but you're like, I'm satisfied. Fuck mm-hmm. everybody else. What? You're just going to keep it to yourself. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know you don't do it, but video games. Taste the meat and the heat. Oh, God, I just stabbed a parking attendant. Where's the button to turn myself in? Uh, there's like, I w- Okay, for the record, eventually, I will be playing video games again. <laughs> I just need to buckle down and focus on shit because I know. Yeah. Like I need I to it. hop on some shit. Hop like, on. Hop on. Not move on. And then, and then move on. <laughs> 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 Anyways, speaking of hopping on, there in the video game industry, there's a huge, huge trend right now for survival games. Like yeah. open world survival games. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what started it. There was a big game that came out in 2013 called DayZ. It was like a mod for another game. My dog's name's Daisy. Daisy. Yeah. Not Daisy. I know. But anyways, <laughs> since then, there's just been an explosion of survival games. And I have just been fiending the shit out of all of them. Like, cause you're a survivor. You're it's so funny. Me. Like, that was gay. Yeah, it was. I'm sorry. It's amazing. The amount of content there is, like, and the amount of, like, I I play on PC, right? So I have Steam. So it, you get all these early access games, mm-hmm. and there's millions. Maybe not millions, but a <laughs> fuckload of survival games, and some of them are so bad, but some of them are just so good mm-hmm. and addictive. And uh, I've been playing, I played DayZ, and then I played this game called Stranded Deep, and it's like you're stranded on a remote island. And, and you're uh, deep. Well, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, I, it's crazy because, like, the well, casual gamer... just, like, gamer, deep woods kind of deal? or like No, it's called Stranded Deep because you're in the Caribbean, and your plane crashes and there's a bunch of islands oh. and uh, they're they're small islands. They're small, small islands. Do you have to like swim to each island and shit? Yeah, so you have to figure to like, ca- the thing is it, they don't relate really well to casual gamers because you start off and they're, these games are so. Start with like nothing. Yeah, you, you have start to, with like, z- zero. No clothes, and there's no like food, very no little fucking water. There's very little tutorial to tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. So like in Stranded Deep, you. Well, you, I think that's what's so addictive about it because it's like I have to figure this shit yeah. out. You know what I mean? Like, but I get it because there's some gamers that don't like that kind of shit, but I love it. 
And anyways, like you, you get dropped into this world and you literally have nothing. And some of them, it's insane what you can build. Mm -hmm. Like when I played Stranded Deep, you start with nothing. And I, I got all the way up to the point where I had like this infrastructure of like houses on I on separate islands and like I had I was like I could hunt All these great white sharks and, <laughs> like you could hunt sharks and shit and I, I tapped that game pretty quick like mm. I ran out of stuff to do but there's this new game I started called uh, The Long Dark yeah you're tell and tell me about it a little bit but yeah I'll, t I'll tell the listeners too it was like <clears throat> Everyone considered it to be, I was online, I was like contemplating getting it or not, and everyone's like, this is the hardest survival game I've ever seen, and blah, 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 and I'm, I'm like, all right, <clears throat> so I bought into it, and I picked it up, and I'm playing it, and I'm like doing really well, and my guy's surviving, I'm like, got lots of food, and then all of a sudden I get locked into this fucking dam in the outside where I literally can't figure out what to do and there's fucking wolves around me and I'm like, oh, yeah, it is pretty fucking hard. Well, when didn't you say your guy was like exhausted? Yeah, you had he was no tired. Other I had no, I had no energy left so I had to sleep. Mm -hmm. So I found like a little cave and I fell asleep. Like I put the bedroll down and I slept and I woke up and it was like 10 out of 10 blizzard. My guy had like hypothermia and was like frostbitten and then there was fucking wolves it was like insane that is pretty crazy yeah i just love how immersive shit like that is well there's something coming out or if, if it's not out now and a lot of these games like like you said there's a big it runs off these mechanics where it's like it's so almost surreal to how realistic it would be like because you, you you know it starts <clears throat> breaking down like the energy levels the the amount of yeah, water the, you need the game the engines food, like uh, the game engines and stuff but now yeah. they're coming in with these games you should google or youtube this game called identity and i think i've heard of it it's like those kind of games are coming up like they're building yeah, like in, These in the long dark, you have to eat, you have to drink, you have to sleep. But no, like they're literally building like these games that are societies. Dude. That are like I've economy I'm, bait like you can oh, literally have a job in this fucking game I know. and make I've, a living fucking uh, playing a game. I know. There's a game that I'm currently supporting called uh, Star Citizen. I think I heard it's that one gonna too. be unreal. Like it's a, it's a game where the developers broke off from a studio and they got. I think it's like, I'm. A, it's either the number one or number two highest uh, crowd-funded campaign ever created. Hmm. Like they got like huge money. I think it was like twenty-five million dollars. On crowdfunding, and they've just been off, like, they're off the leash, right? So they don't have to answer to anyone, and they're just making this insane game. It's slow, but it's unreal. Like, it's like you're saying, there's an economy in the game. You have to, like, you have, when it's going to be done, you're, like, it's going to be MMO, wide open, space travel, and it's seamless, seamless, um like planet entry like so you can go from flying around in space through the atmosphere and th the planet will procedurally like, like, yeah, yeah i'll show you after it's insane it looks like insane what's it called? star citizen star citizen yeah i'm gonna look that up and it's you guys should look that up too yeah i'm pretty intrigued it's unreal it's like even uh me and matt we went to uh vr arcade again not like last week but the week before i'm pretty sure and <laughs> i think out of the fucking like eight kids that i saw that were there playing three or four of them were playing job simulator yeah i <laughs> i don't get shit like that either but i i do you know what i mean like 
It's because it's, y- you can like, like I, go in and be good at it, and I don't know. But it's I like really go get know. a f- fucking job, or it's like. But it's a lot still of these kids, a like game. A, like it still has that feel of a game. It is, but at the same time, you look at those mechanics and you're like, you can fucking train people to there's do people, anything. Okay, there's a game called Farming Simulator. No, I've seen that. That and there's people like the the missions are like, go oh, cut your neighbor's lawn. I'm <laughs> like, why? What the fuck? I'm gonna take the lawnmower and do fucking donuts and backflips and shit, not cut my neighbor's fucking grass. And you can actually go and do it and cut the grass or grow corn and fucking chop it And then it you get down. a thumbs up and then you just wasted an hour of your life. Yeah. I like games with story or like no, that's awesome the, that's the me- gameplay mechanics. and. But I'm thinking more along the lines of like, you know, gamifying things to learn them. Like Everybody. It's because right, it's being done. It is being done, but it's such early stages. Like pe- a lot of people are talking about it and then the people that are doing it, that's just not... Like everybody you, thinks if you VR think about it, is, it's so crude. Everybody thinks VR is here. It's not here. It's not. No, it's no. very crude if you think about how far it can actually go. Like, but the one problem VR is always going to have is resistance. Like you, like if you're in the game and you can touch a table in real life, there's not going to be anything like I'm touching this. Until but in VR, I can go down, down. and then. They well, just fucking plug into your brain. And see, then... one thing they can do is like, I've had the idea of like having like an exoskeleton kind of around you, and it and it stops. Like, well, I I said that last time we did a pod or something. Maybe it was. I've I've thought of it before it's too. Such like, a, like yeah, exactly. Like so the if like suit, the table comes, like if it, you hit like, resistance stops, or whatever, yeah, it, stops it stops your you. fucking body. That's, that'd that'd be, cool. be crazy. But I think they could do that with. Planning a few electrodes on you, and then like hitting well, yeah. your nervous no, system. No, they can. And They've, then, you know, like they're in. Do uh, you ever watch the show? It was the three people from MythBusters. They made their own show, The White Rabbit, uh-uh. like Carrie Grant and Tori. Uh, no, I never saw that. Well, there was the one episode where they hooked Tori up to this. Well, I'll preface preface it first is that they they. They hook a cockroach up to, like, electrodes onto its antennas. And they can control it. And they can control it. by like. I've heard about that, but yeah. I never saw that show. So they took it one step further by attaching Carrie and Tori up to the same uh, linkage. Like, they, they put a... So whatever Carrie does, it sends a signal... And they hook it up to his brain, his arms, and his muscles. And, like, he's going... They they tell him to pick up a glass of wine or something. And he picks it up. And when Carrie moves her arm, he fucking moves his arm the same exact way. It's crazy. So, like, it's possible. You can totally do it. So, so if that's, you could, that's if there's where, some like, way, my cynical mind starts coming in. It's like, you know, if technology because progresses it, to the point where we're not developed enough, they yeah. can literally fucking turn us into robots. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, But f- that's the way that you're going to do it. You're, you're going to get to the point where you, you, simulate the, you simulate the signals sent from one host to the other so that when they the, the signal sent, then they react, and then you just reverse engineer it and, and flip the code or flip the, the signal so that when you send it, it's being sent out mm-hmm. the other way. So... It, in theory, it works. You could totally do that. Well, you could have a factory of people with one person actually doing the motions of doing something, and then everybody's like... Yeah, but then you get one guy yeah. janked up in the machine, <laughs> and he's still trying to do the fucking motions. Yeah, just throw him, fucking grab another <laughs> yeah, one. Right. All right. Uh, that's how factories make you feel, though. Like, you're just a No, I know. I don't want to get into that. No, I know. It's but, uh, yeah, I think we can end on that. We've been running a little long on this one. Hey, it was a great podcast. It was a great podcast. I like that podcast. <laughs> no, we had a really good conversation with Dark Guy, and uh, you know we didn't go too too deep, but we went just deep enough. Just deep enough. Just so, yeah, I, I feel satisfied. Yeah, it was good. Was was it as good as, good as it was? For you, you that could have been funny. That could have yeah. been funny. Yeah, 
I think was it as good for you as it was for me? No, that's not what I was going to say. Yeah, it was. No. What were you going to say? I was going to say that, but <laughs> cooler. But I didn't. Yeah, you fucked it up. Yeah, I fucked it. We, <clears throat> need, we needed at least one train wreck in the show. We love train wrecks on this show. I know. So. We didn't even use that camera there. Is it on? We want to thank you at the Wanderers, <coughs> as Jason burps. Extreme close up. <laughs> All right, that's that. That's a wrap. Yeah, don't be silly. Wrap your willy. So, check us out on Twitter at the Wanderers Pod, on Instagram at Wanderers dot Pod. No, that's Snapchat. Wanderers. Instagram is too. Is it? Yep. Did you change it? Because I didn't. No, I'm fairly certain. <laughs> we might have train wrecked this as well. We are. You were watching a train wreck in oh, fuck. live action. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can you hit the right buttons? I'm what? way off. I hit every single wrong button. Because I have two fucking pages in the folders, but... Bro. Now I'm on plenty of fish. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? Oh, nothing. That I'm retarded. Uh, I don't know Instagram. Hit the fucking logo, bro. Yeah. Wanders dot podcast. No. No. no, it's the Wanders podcast. That's our name. Yeah, but it that's does the... it does dot for everything. Whatever. I'm pretty sure you could search either or and look at our two pictures. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we're gonna uh, we're gonna get on. Oh, the we've app. moved up. On the iTunes search. Didn't we? We did. We're number one now. Fucking knew it, yeah. bro. I did it, bro. <laughs> Anyways, you know where to get us. Yeah. We're going to finish this on this glorious train wreck. Hank. Finish it. Oh, yeah. You want to throw down with a hoe down? I'll get my guitar. I'll get my washboard. I'll go get my string bass, which is really a keyboard. Hey, man, I'm gonna go, go get my banjo. Maybe I'm gonna go get a little accordion, man. What do you think? No. No, 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 no banjo, man. Let's go. One, two, three. Hey, yo, man, I'm gonna go, go now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a verse right now. Blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. We'll shine on the one that's gonna prove the true. Blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. We'll shine on the one that's gonna let me blue. Bobby, put that down. That's the jug I keep stuff in. <laughs> I didn't mean to get into it. No, no, it's my fault, Connie. I told you to saw. <laughs>